What's up, Man 25 Gamers? In today's video, we are taking a look at the game of the week. And this week, we are featuring the Green Bay Packers with the Indianapolis Colts offensive playbook and the Nickel Psycho defensive playbook. If you guys do not know what we're running, be sure to check out my YouTube channel's earlier videos, and it will give you, uh, it'll keep you up to date as far as to what we're doing uh, with this offense and defensive scheme. Coming out, we're going to establish the base play, the wide receiver drag out of the sh shotgun doubles or shotgun normal in the Indianapolis Colts playbook. Remember, we could find the 155 Psycho defense in the Nickel. 155 in the Washington Redskins playbook. Coming out, we're just going to establish this and man coverage so we know we can just take the quickness to the back, get the ball out of our hands, and just take a just see where it takes us. Sometimes that'll break, sometimes it won't. It just depends. Uh, here, I'm going to make curl flats out of the halfback angle. I can't remember if I talked about this or not, but just making curl flats is, is just a really effective thing this season. And we'll take a quick 12 yards or from Randall Cobb on the outside there. Pretty clutch catch by him. Uh, I thought I had him in the slot here. Get him subbed in. All right, so off to a pretty good start. I'm, I'm looking to come out here and just kind of, I don't want to show too many things. I just want to move quick here. Um, so we're going to run a lot of pistol wide trips. Pistol wide trips has actually become probably my favorite formation in the Colts playbook. Uh, it's not only found in the Colts playbook, but it, I feel like it is really uh, a great adv uh, a great advantage to using the Colts playbook. You get the uh, shotgun bunch tied in, and you get the pistol wide trips. You also get the pistol full house, and and these are just all really really good uh, formations. And and the pistol this year is one of the best running. Uh, I just love the pistol. I don't know. It's not necessarily my favorite formation in real life. Uh, but in Madden, it's very effective for some reason. They block a little better, I feel like. So um, that's why you're seeing you're going to see a lot of pistol this game. Uh, in this situation, we're just going to check down to our run out of the out of this playbook because uh, I, I had numbers to the left side, and Eddie Lacy got going backwards. And that's why I like Eddie Lacy right there. You see the power uh, in every punch that he has, and and that's what this is what I like to do lately on opening drives is come out just show a lot of different runs. And, and just force him to adapt. Here I'm going to go to the read option there and Rodgers. Slide down. Be sure you are sliding down with the quarterback in this game. Unlike last year, it's a lot more prone to fumbles and also injuries. So be sure to just take note of that. Uh, but here you're just going to see a lot of the strong same running play. Uh, just because I'm trying to work the ball up the field without showing a lot of my, my scheme on, on this early down. Um, simply because it's it's just my kind of thought process. I wanna I wanna get the ball out of my hands quick. I want to have a lot of things so he can't identify what I really want to do later on. So I kind of save it basically is what I'm doing. But I'm really showing a lot of pistol wide trips here. It's kind of become my main formation out of this playbook. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, like I said, it's one of the better. Has this really just awesome run. And uh, we're going to have to give Eddie Lacy a breather here. Bring in our backup running back to Juan Harris. Give him some runs here. I'm actually going to bring in Jonathan Franklin. I like him a little bit better. Uh, mainly just because I'm a fan of him in real life. Um, not really that much of a... Ra I mean, rating-wise, he's probably not any better than DeJuan Harris. But I like him a little better. Oh, man, this is a late-night commentary, too. Oh. But uh, you see, I'm just kind of walking down the field, and I'm just like, like I said, just running the ball quick, quick plays, and uh, recognizing what the defense is doing. Uh, here, two man under. I like this post route user catch. I don't know what 52 was doing in the middle of the field. He was actually manned up to the tight end, and I guess Jermichael Finley beat him so bad that he ended up going to a completely different route entirely. I don't know why he was. I don't know what happened on that play that possess that that idiot to get over in the way there uh, here I'm going to go with the levels play I love levels um, it's probably one of my it's probably my favorite passing concept in the game um, it's very simple to read it's almost identical to curl flats it's just over the middle of the field here and it's very easy for us to work with remember our sim tip of the week and we can throw that with a bullet pass against man coverage and it's going to beat it every time in practice mode they covered a little better but in in game uh, it just works a lot 
uh, a lot, a lot, a lot of times. So I just take advantage of it. Uh, here, just go for two early on, just because I feel like I can't be stopped in the early goings of this game. So here he's adjusting, so I'm going to adjust back, give the ball to Eddie Lacy right at the middle, and use his trucking ability. Uh, even, I think they actually played the running back on his option key there, but I just felt like Eddie Lacy could push forward for two yards. I wasn't really going to leave it up to Aaron Rodgers to run on the red zone there. So we got a quick eight points, and now we got to play some D. Can um, we wrap up? And that's why you get a Trenton Holiday. He can run kicks like, like a boss. I mean, literally two seconds, and he was at 45. So he's just a game breaker in general. But hopping into the 155 Prowl or the Psycho, and we're going to come out in our base play, the Invert to Fire. Remember, we want to spy this guy here and blitz that guy down. And we're just going to use her the middle with the Jennings. we got to watch out for the run in this game. Uh, a lot of people are liking a running game this year. I'm liking the running game this year, so so that's when you know. <laughs> All right, so I think our depth chart might not have actually saved. Let me see if I can get some guys in here. That's where DeHonte Jones should be. All right there, and then this is where Brad Jones should be. My man Banjo should be right there. And my man Hawk. All right, there we go. Now we're set up right. Okay, second and five. Uh, this is a situation where I like to still either max coverage zone or max coverage man. Here I'm going to go with the max coverage zone. And there you see. That's what I like about the psycho. It just seems like it. It doesn't necessarily shut down the run, but it always is in position, and it it never gives up a big run for me. Uh, that's just my experience with it. Here I'm going to gamble. I'm going to try to sell out against the run with the Prowl Bear too. If you guys remember, that's our base run D. I really like it this year against the run. So I'm just kind of gambling here early on, trying to get, uh, trying to catch him. And I'm in a cover two coverage. So even if he throws it, I have the underneath covered. And, and hopefully, you know, he's not going to be thinking deep here. So here, shift him around. Play action. I got to get on this tight end. Oh, he's out of bounds. Yes. So I covered him tight enough. I shouldn't have. Uh, I should. I don't know why I fell off on him there. And I'm gonna go with. Um, I'm actually gonna go with the basic man blitz we talked about. The overload blitz here. Set it up. And I'm just trying to gamble, jump some reads. Ended up, I was on that trail. I just just made a poor user play. User control is tough this year. Uh, use L2, I'm telling you right now. If you can u figure out how to properly use the L2 button on PS3 or the L trigger button on Xbox. Uh, strafing this year, you don't want to strafe all the time. But in certain situations, uh, strafing is definitely the way to go. All right, going to come back out in the base play here, invert to fire. And just kind of fill him out again. Power, I feel like it's a counter. Yep, it's a counter. I called the freaking play. Can I get a tackle in the backfield? Come on, I'm standing right there. All right, so second and four here. This is a situation where, like like I said earlier, you know, second and short. This is where you want to go either max zone or max man. Uh, but you don't want to be blitzing in this situation because a lot of times they'll throw play action, max protector, or something to try to get you deep. And that's what that's why I like this um, situation for a oh excuse me situation for a uh, max cover because you can catch them in a bad play every once in a while. Like I said, you want to get over here. Screen there you said that's why we max cover it. Um, obviously the mac the yellows don't always do a good job against the screen, but that's where you start to get adjusted. You start to put purples over there, you know, contains stuff like that. Uh, I feel like this is a good time to send the basic zone blitz at him. Overload three seam here. Well, I guess we'll find out if it is or not. But we're gonna call the base zone covered or base zone blitz here. First and ten. Gambling on this stuff. Uh, we're gonna put purples on the outside to stop. Wow, 
we're going to put purples on the outside to stop the out routes and we had the middle of the field basically we we're just going to concede the uh deep streak because of the the per the uh, position we are on the field we don't have to really worry about um we don't have to really worry about that and we're actually going to send the outside linebacker on the right as well we're going to hot route him to blitz So this is what it looks like here. And we got to get on him. Screen. Can we tackle? Can we please tackle? Can nobody tackle? Golly. We're making Ronnie Hillman look like a freaking... Look like Tim Tebow out there. Good night. Alright. Uh, Prowl Bear 2 here. This is kind of just sell out. You're trying to stop the run. So I'm going to man him up on the halfback. Good job, Clay Matthews. That's, that's Clay Matthews coming up big here. Uh, I'm kind of debating on whether or not to run commit. I'm kind of debating on whether or not run commit is going to do any good or not. I'm going to spread my guys out and then run commit middle. Right. Come on, wrap up. Wrap up. Good job, Clay Matthews. All right, I'm going to do it again. Well, if he comes out and let's see what he comes out in. You think he'll come out in two or pro personnel. If he comes out in, in um, three wide or nickel nickel package, uh, the package where you normally call a nickel three wide receiver, uh, I might not run commit here. Yeah, two tight end, definitely going to run commit. I'm going to run commit right. And just kind of hope to go. Oh, I just went off sides. Dang it. That's the dumbest piece of crap. You're so, your guy pushes you forward because he's lining up over the center. And you just go off sides. Wow. That is crap. Dang it. All right, I'm going to run commit to the left. Come on. Ah, oh, dang it. He snuck in. I was trying to... I, I didn't want to run him down because I had run him down the last two plays. And he he had not had success running over the middle. So I don't know why he went back to the middle. That's just an odd play call. But I guess he's just committed to running down the middle in the goal line. I don't know. But a good drive by him. Uh, a very big mistake there by not going for two. And that's why I like to... You know, that's why I like to go for two early in the game. If I get it... I get an advantage like that. But, again, you know, this is kind of now we're starting to kind of see the defense. And, you know, some of you guys may think, oh, you just gave up seven points. Why would you tell? Why would you say that's a good defense? Well, because he had to drive up the field. A lot of people can't say that for some of their defense's possessions this year. As we see Randall Cobb get us in prime field goal position, fake a dude out. Can he go all the way? Randall Cobb, 18? Oh, I got dive tackle at the very end of the play. That's why you get a Randall Cobb on your team. Alright, uh, some of you guys may not know. Actually, no, we'll go ahead and stay in the gun normal. I was going to go to a, a big, uh, a, like a running set because I know Randall Cobb is going to be tired here. So here, just more, uh, there's not enough t uh, field space here to kind of want to, I don't want to show him because I don't need to right now. So just more power. Um, take what the defense gives me. I feel like I can run on him all game. I feel like this power run is one of the better runs in the game. So I'm just going to keep taking it over and over and over again. Maybe throw some wide receiver drag, but nothing really complicated. Oh, my gosh. That's a stupid play. That's not a bad play call. It's just a bad read because I had the running back open in the flat there, but I got greedy and tr tried to go for the immediate quick strike touchdown because I had the one-on-one. -on -one. Typically, that will work. Um, the route will typically beat man. It's just I threw it a little bit too early. I got a little antsy in the pocket. And uh, that's the result. So that's why you got to be patient. That's why you got to be taking what the defense gives you. Uh, right there, I did not do a good job of that. Uh, here, just max zone him. Uh, zone out here. And that's exactly why. Curls. I got uh, three people over there. They just swapped the ball. <sighs> that's... I might get a little frustrated earlier on in this game uh, just because I'm so tired. But, yeah, that's, that's not too bad of a defensive call there. Uh, let's get back into the uh, – we're actually going to go cover three, max coverage setup. I've got Banjo here over the middle. I love saying that. 
pick. Yes, my man, De John. That's why you get a Detane Jones. And I, I don't know if, if Detane Jones wouldn't have picked that. I had three other people over there. So, you know, that's what I like about the cover three is it just takes all these quick stuff away. And that's why I call it in second and ten or second and long because um, a lot of times what will happen is they'll they'll throw the ball in second and long, obviously. But what you're trying to do is you're trying to keep it under about three yards so you have a shot at um, so you have a shot at getting that third down and third down and medium power here, and that's a that's a good like that's a, such a good run there. And uh, one thing and again, guys, if you are not using the precision modifier to make your cuts, uh, precision modifier, in my opinion, is one of the best buttons in the game. You hit L2 or L trigger to activate it, and and then you just do whatever move you are doing. So it's very easy to use, and it's very effective too. Here, I love wide receiver drag uh, for that for that situation. Just because wide receiver drag is very simple. It's got about three main reads, and they're all uh, centered around they're all centered around the the wheel route to the back. So it almost always is, it almost is always open because the routes progress and the the way they work off each other. So. Usually that right side's all you're gonna have to read, especially in the goal line. That wheel route last year was a little bit better than it is this year, unfortunately, but it's still almost as effective. So just know that that route is money in the red zone. Now if they're in cover two, obviously you may have to hit your drag, but just that right side, it just it's very hard to defend it. Okay, so now we have a two touch, or actually we don't have a two. We have a one possession advantage here. Uh, wash, rinse, and repeat here. Base play. And we got to watch out for the right side curl flats. That's a good play by Sam Shields coming off the edge there on the invert two fire to make a play on the back. That's why we call the invert two fire. It just, it's a good, it's a fairly decent pressure and it also provides pretty good coverage. Here we're going to go cover three, max coverage, pass commit. We're also going to call it a sky's cushion coverage so that it gets a little bit deeper. And we're going to come underneath and try to wrap up. Oh, dang it. I got a little bit too antsy there. I don't know what I, I don't know why I came so far down on that. I should have recovered a little earlier. Um, I kind of knew, I didn't know that's where he wanted to go, but after I saw him, you know, running the play, obviously I, I jumped it. Crap, I don't know if this blitz. There we go. Look at Sam Shields. That was the invert to fire. I forgot to. I didn't get the defensive tackle spot. I actually got somebody else on the play spot. Uh, ended up still coming in. That's why I was a little worried. I hope he doesn't quit. He may challenge it. Oh, he quit. Oh my gosh. All right, so let's play one more. And then if this guy quits halfway through, that'll still be about 30 minutes of gameplay for you guys. So, um, one of the things, real quick, and I'm going to address this while we're in, in this mode here. Uh, some of the people have been asking why my record is so bad on this game. And it's not necessarily because I'm a bad player. It's, it's, it's because, like, at my college, the internet was really bad for gaming it was really good for other stuff like i got to upload videos really fast but it was really bad for gaming and and i guess it was a combination of that and disconnect glitches because what i would do is i'd log on to a game and then in two seconds i'd it says connection to appear lost and then i would get a loss for it and i have like 46 losses and i i literally haven't had enough time to play 46 games so it's like weird how my record's all messed up but that's just the way it goes sometimes on online. Uh, that's why you want to be getting in communities and stuff like that so that, you know, you can play legit players. Um, community I recommend to play in is the Madden Tips community. Um, Madden Tips community is very good. I'll be in the Madden Tips community. I think uh, they got a lot of good players in there. You guys know, uh, if you guys don't know, uh, you should be ashamed of yourself. But Problem, uh, the greatest Madden player of all time is in there. Uh, Z Files is in there. S Gibbs is in there. Ryan Dykes is in there. Hollow Point is in there. Uh, just a lot of really good gamers. Relly 
is in there. I mean, you name it. A majority of good gamers, uh, as far as Madden goes, are in this community. So you definitely want to check out uh, MaddenTips.com and Madden Tips' community. Um, if you're looking for a place to play legit players um, that don't quit, and typically their connection is above par, uh, is above average. Uh, but like I said, just a little bit of an issue. I have recently got it fixed. So if you guys want me to do a, a road to the top 100, I guess I could do that. I guess I could try to do one a week or something. But but yeah, it's um, it was like I was I was like I think it was like 46 and. I was like two and forty six, but my I had more points scored than my opponent, so it was weird. So I don't know what was up with that. But anyway, that takes care of that. I'm not gonna address it again. Uh, record online, guys. Trust me, it doesn't mean as much as you think it is. With disconnect glitches, disconnect with uh, connection issues and stuff like that, you can't really get a great grasp of how good someone is from their online head to head record. You just gotta end up playing them. So that's just my two cents on the issue. Um, but if you guys think that my head-to-head -head record sucks uh, and that I'm lying to you, then I completely understand because I know there are people out there that would do that. But I don't know why I would lie about a head-to-head -head game. Uh, I don't know. But anyway, that's over. Let's get back into this gameplay. So, again, it's just wash, rinse, and repeat, honestly. I mean, and that's how most of my schemes I set them up to be. You know, first first drive you're no huddle no huddle no huddle no huddle hurry up hurry up hurry up and you're quick snapping because you just want to get on the board and get off the field you don't want to oh look at that was a pretty good kick return why am i playing the broncos again isn't that weird i guess a lot of people are liking the broncos but um what you like i said what you want to do early on in the game is you just want to get kind of a feel for what he's doing and you don't necessarily, like I said, you don't necessarily have to have to for sure know. You just have to kind of get an idea. And, and you're not trying to score 100 points on your first drive. You're just trying to get down the field and score without showing too much of your play. So that's why I say, like, that's why I recommend a lot of running. Um, just because when it comes down to that two-minute drill late in the game, you know, you're not going to need the run. But as of right now, establishing a running game that is effective and can get you consistent yards. I don't know why my receiver didn't block that corner, but uh, I'm telling you guys, this power run is is a is a monster. But you you just pound the rock, pound the rock, pound the rock, and eventually they're going to start committing to stopping the run. And because it's out of your wide trips, it's so good because it's out of the same personnel as all of your other plays that you're going to be using from this formation. And like I said, you see the ability of Eddie Lacy to really run the ball, and that's something that the Packers missed last year. They didn't have that go-to back, and now with Eddie Lacy, Jonathan Franklin, and Dewan Harris, and James Starks, and John Kuhn, you now have a legitimate couple of options you can get the ball to. And in combination with that and Aaron Rodgers and these receivers, uh, Green Bay Packers are really a pretty good team this year. And uh, there you see we open up with another quick score, and that's why I'm saying like you don't necessarily have to you don't necessarily have to run your main stuff out of the gate uh, just because it's not in my opinion it's not it's not smart um, I like to save kind of my main stuff I don't you know not, not obviously within reason you know you're gonna see some wide receiver drag you're gonna see some you're gonna see some uh, bunch tied in obviously you know that's kind of the main stuff of the scheme but at the same time first drive especially when I get the ball first I just want to get down the field score and get get on defense because like um, the more I feel like the more time I spend on defense in the first half the better grasp I'm gonna get on my opponents doing so that's why I would I would say you know you would I would be almost go far to say you punt um, sometimes like not just not obviously you don't just come out and and punt but if you're for if you know if it's fourth and long or fourth and medium even i would say punting is not a bad option early on in the game so uh here uh let's just go heavy pressure let's just blitz all the linebackers out of two men under see what he does here we got jennings here i, I forgot to, i forgot i forgot didn't uh, forgot i didn't have the depth chart set up yet unfortunately that I showed you guys on the uh, Team of the Week video. Okay, so that's not good. He got one play, one score. 
I don't know what's up with Ronnie Hillman these days, but looking more like Tim Tebow every day. Good night. Okay, so we can scratch uh, we can scratch that play off the off the playbook. Uh, I just sent I, I was gonna send pressure early. My goal was I, did, I just couldn't get to the invert too far, unfortunately. Um, but I was gonna send pressure early and just kind of see what Peyton Manning's doing. I was expecting play action, so I was gonna try and gamble on a sack. Um, but unfortunately, that's not what happened. <laughs> and I got I got burned over the uh, not really over the top. I just got burned on a run and. Wasn't playing this one run defense with the safety and got caught, and that's what happens in this game if you don't play this one run defense. So now we can kind of get more into the scheme. Um, man, Randall Cobb is one of the best kick returners in this game, in my opinion, just because of the agility. I think agility is more important than speed this year. I don't know about you guys, but uh, that's what I've seen. And I've also seen that this wide receiver drag play. Uh, I'm almost assuming hot route and hot route the running back to a wheel route. Just because I see, I feel like it works a little better. There's the drag, and and the drag is just simple, guys. I mean, and, and this is this is what this this is why I love this play so much because it, the reads are just almost automatic, and they all progress right off each other really well. Man, so you just hit Cobb, make a juke. That was a good. That's what I'm saying. That precision modifier just makes a a new game. No huddle this, and, and this is a lot of times when you get a big game like this and you're down the red zone, no huddle real quick into the pistol wide trips read option weak. Know that you're reading the defensive end, and you hear me hitting X. You hear that? Hit X a lot. Go, 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 because they can't adjust out of it, and it's a really good run in general. It's going to give you easy points. Um, yeah, that may be a douchebag way to play, but if you want to score points with Madden 25, there is no better way to do it than quick snapping off the huddle. Those quick snap runs are very difficult to adjust to because not only are they good runs in general, but they're now good runs with the defense can't adjust to it. It's a quick snap off the no huddle. It's right after we hit them big with a pass play. I really like that idea, especially with the effectiveness of the pistol wide trips in the Indianapolis playbook. I it's it's a no-brainer for me. That's what I'm doing this year. I don't know about you guys, but that is my uh, key tactic. I think probably out of this playbook, especially um, in a situation where I make a big gain and get a no huddle. So, all right, now let's get into the base play. Uh, hopefully, he doesn't dot this. As bad as he dotted the first one. No pass commit here, just standard. Invert to fire setup. Watch the corner route to the tight end. Yep, corner route. Nope, oh, toss. Get wide. Dang it. Alright. Let's see. Getting going here. Get me on picket. There's the spy. Invert to fire again. Probably a toss. No, pass. Crap, I got clicked off. I hate when that happens. Got clicked off of my dude and got caught on the uh, stupid defensive tackle. Because the game, for some reason, thinks that you should use your defensive lineman. Okay. Watch toss. Let's see if we can't get this thing going here. Let's see what he does. Get to the edge. There we go. There we go. So there's, like I said, it doesn't really, you know, crush the run, but it just seems like it always holds it to, to three. If you do, if you get in the middle and use her. Watch that. Pick. Oh, he dropped it. Come on, AJ Hawk. I uh, should have been in max coverage too. There. I don't know what I was doing. That uh, was a bad play call. Uh, the situation overload three seam all day. I'm going to yell at everybody on the field, baseline twice. Oh, no. Gosh dang it. Who throws? Third and seven, man. That's a situation where you're gambling hardcore that he's going to throw a short pass. And, and you're trying to just... Shut shut down the quick stuff and, and hope to God that he doesn't throw a streak. Randall Cobb. Oh, he just karate kicked him. 
Okay, so 14-15, I mean, just trading punches right now, but we're kind of seeing, you know, streak on third and seven. Uh, first down, I mean, the first drive was horrible defensively. We got in the wrong play with the wrong personnel and got dotted. But you'll see that, I mean, you'll see as, a, as the scheme goes on. Nickel Psycho is not the most dominant defense, but it is a really effective one. And not only that, but it just, and there you see the wide receiver drag wheel to the back. But, it's not the most it's not the most dominant scheme, but it's very good at shutting down uh, people by the third and fourth quarter. It's very good at adjusting out of it, so that's what I like about it. It's like a it's like a puma to to the forty six bears tiger or something. I don't know how I, compared to animals. I mean, it's it's just like a really good, um, easy to adjust defense. Uh, single back. I think we went over the I think we went over the Z trips. I hope that's what we did. No, we didn't. It was dice slot, I think. I think it was dice slot. We'll check down inside zone. It was one of the two. I wanted to check down to an under center run. And that's I'm saying in, precision modifier guys is so good this year, and um, you got to be running the ball. I mean, Indianapolis Colts playbook is balanced. It's probably one of the most balanced playbooks in the game. Uh, it has really good running. It has really good passing. And if you're going to be elite with this, you need to be checking down into your running offense. I'd say three to five times a drive. I mean, it's so effective, and if you can get good with a precision modifier, um, it's hard to stop, especially that uh, especially that wide trips halfback power. I think it's one of the best runs in the game. I don't know. I haven't talked to a whole lot of people about it, but I think it's I think it's the top five run in the game. I mean, you've got the inside zone split out of the Tampa Bay split. You've got the HB power out of the Saints uh, iPhone Pro Twins. And then I think that the third run, third best run, probably read option of some sort. And then I think top five, though, I think that makes an appearance. Uh, it's just a really tough run to stop. Okay, so hop back into the base here, see if we can't get a stop here. I'll spread my linebackers out, trying to kind of keep them contained. Call it a disguise cushion to try to get a little deeper drop. I see it feels like he's sucking my guys down on those sh underneath stuff, and and we're losing the battle deep. There you go. There we go. All right, second and long. Uh, don't get too smart for yourself. Call this cover two. I'm gonna hop onto the middle linebacker this time. I'm just trying not to get too smart for my good. I'm trying to stay within the, the constraints of the scheme. There's a pick by A.J. Hawk, and that's what I'm saying. That's why I hopped on the middle linebacker. And the two-man under, the only weakness to that coverage defense is, is that middle linebacker's hook zone doesn't go super deep. So I like to get I like to get onto him and use him in that situation just because I know that I can sure it up and, and I can I can kind of make sure that nothing they can't abuse that area of the field. Um, and obviously he went to the post earlier and there we go. So there's the interception we needed. Um, down in the red zone, and this may seem a little bit weird to some of you guys, but I am a huge, huge fan of the shotgun wide trips Z spot. Uh, the setup we talked about in the video right here. Rolling out, and a lot of times that corner route is money. And, and it's from about 15 yards and in, I, I probably would do it. Um, Obviously, I really like running the ball in the red zone and inside the 10-yard line on the goal line, but I think for about a you know about a 20 to 15-yard play from 20 to 15 yards out, uh, you need to play. I think Z spots one of the best ones. Uh, the way we talk about setting up with a smoke screen uh, on the other side. So, uh, and we're seeing the power of the Packers offense right now, but we're also seeing the the interceptions and and everything coming together right now. So. This is looking to be a high-scoring matchup against one of the best quarterbacks in the game in Peyton Manning. Um, and then obviously Aaron Rodgers is a shootout. So uh, Wrap up there. Good play. Good special teams play. 29-14. Uh, He's probably going to be going to the... If you remember, guys, earlier on in the game, he hit me on a, um, a deep post. I'm pretty sure it was. And he also had a good run. So i got to watch out for those two things. So I'm watching the slot on the right. There's your run. There's AJ Hawk blowing it up. Okay. Here, uh, max coverage. Remember, we like to get on AJ Hawk in that situation. 
So we're now in the middle of the field. Pick. Oh, damn on, man. You guys saw him pick that off earlier in the video. Okay, third and five. Uh, gas him up, of course. Uh, remember, he went to the streak on third and five last time, so we're going to go with the man version of this blitz, overload blitz. Um, And I've got I've got the tight end here with Banjo. I'm going to user press him. Remember, he went to the streak to the slot last time in the situation. There's your bump. And there's your sack. There we go. Fourth and five. So you saw, I mean, he hesitated a little bit with that user press, and the pressure got in. Uh, we forced a punt. So good drive by the uh, by me on that on that situation. The uh, reason I went to the man blitz was remember back earlier in the game he threw a deep streak on the zone. So I figured. I'm going to try and hit him with the man pressure, see if I can, I still will get the same pressure, see if I can now force him to, to think twice before throwing that seam pass. He may think it's two man under or something, and if he thinks twice and I got that user press, it's a very difficult thing to do with that pressure coming in. So that's, that's all about the previous stuff that we saw earlier on in the drive. All right, so he's in a sugar defense here, and I really like this for read option. So I'm going to check into it. I'm my read defender, I'm going to key on that, that dude over there. He tells me to hand the ball off. I'm just going to take that. And that's obviously, you know, if you have a stretch, that's probably what we probably should have called there. But unfortunately, the way we set up the playbook, we don't have that. Probably a zone blitz here. Let's see. Yep, I'll just take my drag. And Nelson over the middle. Third and two. I'm going to go to the bunch tight end. Uh, formation. You guys know I like a I like a X spot out of this, and we're gonna run our standard setup. Motion Cobb down and hit Cobb here, and we'll go. That's a good play. That's a really nice play. The X spot. Uh, I know that uh, Stephen or uh, S Gibbs over at MaddenTips.com. I know they released an e guide on that on that, and that was kind of the main one of the main plays they used. So definitely want to check out that X spot play. Uh, there, just a simple curl flat read out of the normal. Uh, I saw that the, the it looked like a basic play. It didn't look like he was adjusting much. So if they're if they're ever in like a basic type of play and they're press coverage, a lot of times I'll throw either levels or curl flats at them just because it's quick for me to set up those plays. It's a simple read. I've been reading though. I've been reading curl flat and levels reads for, you know, the better part of two years now. Been working hard on getting my reads down from them. So that's just almost like an instant thing for me now. Uh, for some of you who are beginners, it may not be as easy, but you'll get it. The hang of it sh uh, soon. I know you will. All right, two man under here. I'm gonna take the post route. I'm gonna try to user catch that. That was a dumb throw. I should have. I. Number one, I threw that a little bit too soon. And number two, I had the running back wide open. And see, that's one of the things that I struggle with. I don't know about you guys. Some of you guys struggle with certain things. Uh, one of the things I struggle with is taking what the defense gives me. Sometimes I try to force the ball a little bit too much, and, and incompletions happen. I try to, I try not to throw, but uh, you know, but only throw incompletions when I need to get rid of the ball or something. But Sometimes I make make bad reads, and there we go. You see it there. Second and ten. This situation we're setting it up for third and down, uh, so we're just gonna run the ball. We're gonna fake some hot routes here, but we're just gonna run the ball. And uh, we were run, we were running the ball from the from the word second and ten, um, just because you're trying to set yourself up for a good third down situation. Uh, here we're gonna quick snap wide receiver drag. Ah, it's a bad throw. That's why you don't throw on the run with Rodgers. Uh, if you guys think about it here, um, think about where we're at. Um, it's it's going to make a little more sense as to why I'm going for it. We're on the 44. We have a we have about a, what will we have a two possession lead here. We're trying to deliver a, a, a knockout blow here. Aaron Rodgers throws a dot and James Jones drops it. Come on. Dang it. Should have gone to the X spot there. Uh, that was that was a, a situation where you have to go to your, your money play. Um, 
and and from this playbook that's our money formation you know it's not only our main man beater but it's also probably our our core uh formation just like from the gun empty giant was for the new york playbook that we can go to at any time whenever we need a situational occurrence and uh can get to it there was the internet to fire now we're going to get into the uh max coverage man i've got the middle of the field get come on good job sam shields and that's why we went with the man there third and 11 um we're going to go with the zone blitz remembering that he hit us deep early in the game so we're going to go single high over the top so we're going to have one guy deep just in case. And we've got the middle with Burnett. Disguise cushion coverage, of course. Let's see what he does here. Watch that slot on the left. That's me. Oh, good read. That's why I would have probably rather been on A.J. Hawk. Daggone it. Good read by him there. Okay. Let's go to the... Let's go to the cover three here. Run the zone out of it. We're going to use a Burnett here. Pass. Good call. Got me a little lax there. I don't say Inver 2 fire probably would have... Probably would have came up on that, but the cover three max coverage would not. Good call by him. All right, um, man, that that bad fourth down call is gonna come back to bite us. So we're kind of adjusting a little bit to what he's been doing. He has been throwing deep on the right side, so we're just kind of watching to see what he's gonna do here. fight. Dang it. I need you to get in the backfield there. Safety. Okay. Put both safeties and spies here. This is a tactic I use in the red zone. Uh, they play the run a little better and they also go to the middle underneath stuff. With these yellow zones it's going to work really good. I'm going to use or bump the tight end. Most people don't get the tight end pressed a lot. Of course I would get called for offsides. I wasn't even offsides, man. That wasn't even me. I hate that. Why would the com I I don't understand that. It's not like I'm I'm telling the computer to jump the snap or I don't know. Uh here cover 2. Um man up these guys on the outside. And we're just hoping to God he does not run the ball. And he does run the ball. Shoot. Um, run commit here. Got spies over there. And we're just kind of gambling on this run. We're gambling on the inside zone. He's been running a lot. Run commit straight down. If he doesn't pass it, it's going to be a tough read quick. There we go. Okay, so that's why we ran him because we knew it would stuff him for a lot. Um, now we're going to go max coverage. Like we said earlier, we got Hawk. If he runs the ball here, he would be an idiot. But we forgot to play defense. Stack on it. Should have been two man under. I don't know what I was doing. I don't know why I was in cover two. That should have been two man under max coverage. And we would have had it. Dang it. So that's a mistake. Right there, you want to, um reason you want to call two man under is you're going to get the bump on the outside. Uh, you're also going to get the inside coverage. The inside, like they're going to play to the inside there a little better. So you're going to know your only responsibility would be the tight end in that situation. You're not going to be worried about drag. So that's just a bad read by that's just a bad call by me, and then that's a bad kick return by me as well. So two bad plays back to back. Let's see if we can go for the trifecta here. Um, now you're in the two minute drill. Obviously in Madden, 
Uh, two minutes is a long time. So just know that. He probably will have another possession. We're trying to keep him from that. So there's your drag. Get down on the ground. Do not take hit sticks. Uh, here we're just going to go right into the run. Uh, there's 209 left. I know it's going to be a two-minute warning, but I'm definitely going to go ahead and run the ball because the clock's automatically going to stop and just see what I can get. Obviously nothing was there that time. That's fine. But just gets in his head. If we go in a huddle, we usually will going to run. So later on in the game, when we're going to be needing to pass the ball in the huddle, he's going to have in the back of his head, hey, he likes to run the ball. Here we're watching the left slot. If he gets pressed, we're going to have square wide open. Okay, he does not. We're going to have triangle open deep on that deep post. Um, I think he was in cover four there. I'm not quite sure, though. <sighs> Excuse me. Uh, let's go ahead and go to the shotgun bunch. Tight end. We need to run that a little more. Because it is our main... I mean, it's our bread and butter. I mean, the normal, we're good in the normal. It's our base, but... Our, it, you know, it, it's just like it's just like with the New York playbook. Our, you know, our base is that giant saw trail, but the bread and butter is the five wide. So, well, it's a it's a good if I guess it's not five wide technically. Good look for curl flats here. We're gonna take it curl flat setup. Obviously, we know the out routes there. Getting the ball, and we'll go ahead and score. Uh. So, like I said, you know, that's why we take these easy stuff. That's why we keep it simple because a lot of times this game, it just rewards you for, for consistency. So, if you consistently hit out routes, eventually one's going to break like it just did. Or if you consistently hit slant routes or something, I mean, it's, it's eventually going to work. And like I said, defensively, if you consistently are in position, eventually you're going to get a play. If, you know, if you're consistently covering certain routes – Eventually, you're going to get an interception. So now we're going to come into our heavy pass coverage package where you're going to see a lot more overload three seam, a lot more aggressive stuff. Uh, here, I'm trying to kind of get the ball back. So this is going to be heavy pressure, heavy aggressive. This is overload three seam. Probably, probably going to see overload three seam all drive, and you're going to see the yellows on the outside corners. And I like to disguise cushion these yellows. There we go. There's a huge sack. So we can call T.O. here. Um, third and 27. Obviously, this is a situation they're probably not going to convert it, even if they wanted to. So what we're going to do is we're just going to come out and the two men under, and we're going to blitz all of our linebackers. And we're going to spread our uh, – we're just going to uh, – actually, we're not going to spread them. We're just going to pinch them. And now what's going to happen is – oh, he just quit. Okay. Well – Guys, I really appreciate you guys uh, for taking some time out of your day to watch how I use this scheme. Uh, obviously, you didn't get to see all the formations, but you did get to see a lot. Uh, about 50 minutes of commentary here. Hopefully, this can get you a little better idea of how I like to use the plays. Uh, like I said, you know, you don't want to start using, um, you don't want to really start using your trips and bunch and stuff like that till later on in the game. Uh, you guys didn't get to see that, but you did see some certain circumstances where I would use them. Uh, money situations like fourth and short or, or red zone situations. So just be sure to note that. Thank you guys so much for checking out this week's Scheme of the Week. Be sure to come back next week where we break down yet another Scheme of the Week. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next week.